I now have the pleasure of introducing Bruce Daisley. Bruce heads our display and YouTube sales team and has a deserved reputation for great insight and straight talking around the use of display and social. As mentioned earlier, 35 hours of video are loaded onto YouTube every minute. And YouTube is considered by many as the world's second largest search engine. So Bruce is here to share some of the latest happenings from the, the phenomena that is YouTube. So please welcome to stage Bruce Daisley. Good afternoon. So uh, I'm just talking briefly this afternoon to try and give you a picture of some of the things that are happening on the web and some of the trends that you, you might not have noticed. Probably the big one that we often talk about is that quietly, without anyone having really noticed it, um, the, the web has changed in its composition. So uh, the, you might have seen some stats released by Cisco last year that say that currently web traffic is about a third uh, to 40% video. The fascinating thing that Cisco show is that by 2013, they forecast that web traffic will be 90% video. So there's a transformation going on. And the challenge is trying to interpret how your brand, your product is going to work in an environment that expects something far richer, far lusher in terms of the content that's there. What I'm going to do uh, briefly today then is just show you a few examples of, of brands and products who are wrestling with that and just give you an indication how other people uh, are coming up with answers. I thought one of the first things I'd do is, is just look at some of the creativity in the space. So what we're really seeing, especially in the last 12 months, is people are starting to think of the, the web and web video as a different canvas. So not just the canvas that a TV ad can sit on, but how can they play with it in a different way? And probably the most inspiring use of that this year has been this next campaign. So uh, this is a campaign for Tipex. Has anyone seen this campaign? So, uh, so Tipex did uh, something very simple. Hey, I don't want to shoot this bear. Uh. Help me to rewrite this story. Type anything you want with your keyboard, then enjoy. So they took that very simple canvas. I guess, you know, in many ways, the YouTube brand channels like a microsite of the old days. They took that canvas and I've typed in plays football with, a hunter plays football with a bear. Let's play football. Come on, come on, here we go. What I find really inspiring about that campaign um, was that they've taken probably one of the most boring product briefs that anyone was sitting on this year. And it's a small agency in France called Buzzman who've created something that's just extraordinary. 43 million words were typed into that box in the first 24 hours. So anyone who's sitting on a brief thinking, how can I really make someone interact and engage with a, a dull product? I think, you know, there's an illustration of how people are increasingly doing it with sophistication. Probably the other big campaign of the year is the Old Spice campaign. Let me just show you one of the pre-rolls that Old Spice won uh, and, th and then give you an illustration of how it worked. If your man used Old Spice instead of lady scented body washes, he could smell like he took you on more of these while wearing this. Or this. But probably this. All over this. What Old Spice did this year was extraordinary. So effectively, they used um, Twitter as an RSS feed for YouTube videos. And in fact, that's not uncommon. T uh, YouTube is the most tweeted site on Twitter. And so we're getting a lot of people passing video, video content round amongst their friends. What they did, though, is they, they created 200 executions of, of different Twitter responses and sent them out to celebrities, bloggers, news sites. That campaign was part of it. They used the, the same actor throughout. What they did is they achieved 200 million views of that content. The fascinating thing is one of the guys who runs YouTube came into our office last week and he looked, so this is three or four months after the campaign went live, he looked at the latest stats. The stats are doing three, the site is doing three million views every month. So that, that YouTube channel effectively is like a cable TV network of their own. 
And our insight into how YouTube works suggests that in perpetuity, they've got a three million per month reach of that uh, creative they've, they've generated. So it's, it's interesting. These things have a longevity to them, but they also have a massive sales impact. Uh, Old Spice and Procter & Gamble are very protective of their sales data. However, Brand Week in the US did publish this, which is sales uh, panel data from the, the US. It measures all the sales in uh, US supermarkets. And the Old Spice product doubled its sales in the, uh, in the period that that campaign ran. An illustration, I think, and an answer to one of the challenges that we often get, which is, I know that video can engage, I know that video can create a a sort of an emotional um, response, but can it drive sales? And I think all the evidence suggests that people tend to buy things they like and they, they tend to respond to advertising they like. So I thought I'd just give you a couple more il illustrations of how that's working. And uh, one of them is, is just the challenge that I guess a lot of travel um, advertisers have got. How do I communicate things that are nuanced, detailed, sophisticated? So I thought, you know, one of the one of the challenges that life presents is, is these things. Everyone familiar with these? You know, from the product name down to the beautiful iconography, it seems so simple. Only a fool wouldn't be able to, to turn this into a finished product. And in fact, IKEA instructions are one example of how you've got something detailed and, and text-based uh, or, or in the written format. And I just was really inspired when I saw this. This was a creation by a small creative shop who pitched it to, uh, to Ikea and uploaded it onto YouTube. But I think it's a good illustration of how you can use video to overcome one of those uh, product needs. This movie shows you how to build the Pax Nexus wardrobe. Spend just a few minutes watching this movie and you can make sure you get the build right first time. Losh is going to show you all the tips and tricks. He's Swedish, of course. What you will need is the instruction manual. The right thing about this is they've turned something which is, I guess, potentially one of the, the negative brand experiences of IKEA, and they've turned it into a, po a positive brand experience. I thought, how would that be relevant to travel advertisers? Well, let me give an example of how some advertisers are using the space. So firstly, I'll, I'll just go uh, to a, a YouTube ca capture from last week. I'll go via the homepage. This was the the home page on Friday, um, which uses our rich HD format. This was a, a beautiful uh, tandem masthead for Harry Potter, uh, which ran on the site. And I'll skip from there into a channel for Nordic Cruises. So Nordic Cruises wanted to communicate something that, that illustrated that you could build your own holiday with Nordic Cruises. And so what they did is they created effectively a, a way to navigate some of the content that's out there on the web. They curated some Lonely Planet content, they curated some BBC content, CNN, and they built it into a, an experience that felt like a, a Nordic Cruises experience. So, because I'm not online now, I, I'll just give you an illustration. What, what it encourages you to do is build the components of your holiday. Are you keen on doing something that's relaxing? Are you keen on doing something that's, that's about travelling? By building those components together, you can assemble your Nordic Cruise. Now, in the time that that's been live, there's been just, just shy of a million people who have accessed that channel. A great way for them to turn something that maybe until now they've always communicated with a brochure into something that's immediate but experiential. A great way to allow people to feel like they understand what they're buying and what they're getting into. Uh, the, the next example is, oh, the, the next point I make is search loves video. So back to that PAX one, so that was just, a, like I say, a pitch that someone created for Ikea. But I just searched here on, on Google, I searched how to build a PAX wardrobe. And what you see there is just down the page is not only the YouTube link, but there's a Vimeo link for that content as well. Search loves video. In fact, a piece of work by Forrester at the start of last year suggested that if you have video content to do with whatever you're promoting, you're 50 times more likely to appear in natural search results. Actually, you're investing in making yourself more discoverable. And that's becoming more and more common. I did a search here for a hotel someone was talking about at work. This is a hotel in, in Cancun in, in uh, Mexico. Grand Sunset Hotel, Playa del Carmen. And as you see there, there's a couple of videos. Of course, the challenge of this is if you don't create this video content yourself, then someone else could. And what you tend to find at the moment is, in a, is an immense amount of content created by users talking about their experience there. 
Normally, actually, people only post up content in that case when it's positive. So it acts as powerful ad advocacy. But it makes you, uh, it, it's something you need to think about. How do I ensure that I have video content to do with what I'm promoting? The, the final thing I'll talk about is just the, um, uh, well, an example that British Airways did this year. So British Airways were, were faced with a challenge, I guess, when they had the British Airways strike. And the challenge that they faced was that people were talking about the British Airways th strike. All of the news that people were discovering uh, was, was being curated by news organisations and they wanted to get their message across. This was genius in its execution. They, they discovered that when they searched, both on Google and YouTube, they were finding they weren't getting uh, to the top of search results. In fact, the union behind the strike, Unite, were getting the top results. So they sent a camera crew around to interview Willie Walsh. It, it, the, uh, the first interview was recorded and uploaded to YouTube in three hours. The fascinating thing about this, and I think a good il illustration of a brand that really gets it, is they allowed comments to stay on the site. So they allowed comments and they allowed ratings to stay on the site. At the time, we weren't operating the thumbs up, thumbs down. We were operating a five-star system. And the, the content was given five stars, principally four, four and a half, five stars. So a great way for them to get their message out. And in fact, this content tended to appear on the, the evening news as well. Great way to sort of get your, your point over very simply. In fact, the final one I'm going to uh, finish on is about brand fame. So you might have seen these formats that exist on the web, and this is, this is one of the ways that video is starting to get into the web experience. This is one for the Telegraph. Uh, this is their Saab one. I wanted to illustrate that it's not just YouTube that does these things. But a brand came to us, that was uh, a company that was launching a new toy, and it was called the Drone. It's like a, a sort of 300-pound UFO. It's, I, I don't know whether it's aimed at dads or kids. It's sort of this amazing device. Uh, it's about the size of a bin lid that just ups and starts flying around. It has cameras built into it. And they came to us and their brief to us was, we want it to be the most famous toy in the world. So we, we ha had it on this format on the YouTube homepage. Um, and they, they effectively took about six markets. Now, their challenge was they wanted to become famous. And in fact, in terms of size, and that's the product there, it, it delivered 107 million impressions. 1.3 million people went through to buy the product on the site, and it sold out globally. But obviously, that's their short-term objective, selling the product. Just I wanted to illustrate just how powerful these devices can be in terms of driving fame. So I, I looked at insights for search. So the product's called the drone, the AR drone. So I searched for the AR drone on Google. And what you can see there is... Uh, at the time of the campaign, the time it went live, there was an enormous spike in terms of the, the searches for the product. To put that in context, I thought, who's the epitome of fame? So I've, I've ranked them next to Simon Cowell. That's pretty good, isn't it? It's pretty amazing that S Simon Cowell uh, was beaten, of course. In the end, Simon Cowell won, and uh, he, he won out. <coughs> Not surprising, he's probably the most famous person in the world, uh, famous man in the world, but, you know, a, a good illustration, really, that you can achieve brand fame because these products connect so effectively. So we're really innovating in this space now. One of the things we're, we're right um, in the middle of at the moment is we're experimenting with the idea of skippable ads. So the idea behind skippable ads is just show someone an ad once and if it's not an engaged view, we won't charge you for it. So if someone chooses to skip, and sometimes we're getting 50% of people skipping, sometimes we're getting a third of people skipping, if they choose to skip, tends to be that they weren't that interested in your product. So you'll only pay for the engaged views. We think it can try and sort out the marketeers challenge of how do we get a, uh, what, what's the right frequency? How do we get an effective message? So more and more people are using video. Uh, probably one of the most impressive people using it are, are Disney at the moment. Disney have created something where they've identified all the clips on YouTube of people telling their kids they're going to Disneyland and they've they've curated all of that content in their own channel. So effectively, they've taken, they've crowdsourced their content. They've taken all of the genuine experiences of their, of their product and their brand, and they've illustrated how that, uh, that could be relevant to other people, directly turning that into sales, because now we've allowed people to, to link from our site to your site. So in the old days, I guess the, the way that you'd sell a product like Disneyland Holidays would have been brochures or DVDs, now it's about allowing people to navigate their own way through content and turning that interest into a sale. So hopefully a, sort of a brief video interlude. I've given you a sense. 
other travel brands are really experimenting in with this right now. And I think actually the beauty of video is it's such a great space for experimentation. To do things like this are very cheap, very simple, but, but can be uh, immensely effective and can drive a fame or a, a level of sales that um, can be uh, amazingly charging for your business. So giving you a little flavour, hopefully that's been beneficial. Thank you.